This is the second part of our workflow demo on how to set up an employee request portal, where employees can make requests that can then be approved by their assigned managers. We created the employee portal in part one, and now we'll create the manager's portal where managers can review and respond to pending requests. Click the publishing and workflows icon to get started, and then click create new. We'll name this manager's portal and select the published data from our employee request table. This will allow managers to view pending requests upon logging in. This time, we'll enable authentication and use the manager's table to restrict access. Note we could set up an access filter here to only allow specific users to log in. This feature is often used to disallow access to users once their account is marked as expired. On the next screen, let's enable the Remember Me feature and then click Next. We'll use the standard table layout option again for this example and select the fields we want shown in the table. Select Finish to complete the setup process. The page we just created loads in the Workflow Designer. Let's start by updating the name of this page, both in the heading and in the menu. The next thing we need to do is apply a page filter so that only pending requests are shown and so that only requests from the manager's own department are listed. Under the Data tab, click the Page Filter icon and create a filter which only shows pending requests. And requests where the department equals the currently logged in user's department. Remember, under Security Settings, we can enter a new Preview Record ID to preview what will be shown to the different managers when they log in. Let's generate a preview of our new Manager's Portal and see how it looks. Upon logging in, we can see that only the pending requests are displayed, and that only requests from the Sales Department are displayed to the currently logged in manager who is the sales department manager. So far the form is working perfectly. Now let's go back to the workflow designer and add the ability for the manager to respond to these requests. To do this, we're gonna create an edit page. Right click on the pending request page and choose insert edit page. Edit pages are used to edit the records that are being published. In this case, we wanna edit the request to add the manager's response. Edit pages are explained in more detail in the edit page tutorial. For now, We'll just give the edit page a name and click Next. On the next screen, we can select any fields we wish to exclude from the edit page. We'll leave this section blank and click Finish to complete the setup of our edit page. A preview of the edit page is then shown within the designer. We still need to add a link to this edit page from the parent page, so let's do that now. Click on the Pending Request Pages, expand the Layout Settings panel, and click the Column Config property to edit the columns. Let's insert a new column at the end of the table where we can add a button to link to the edit page. Click Add Column, and then choose the text slash image column type. We'll name this column Response Link and remove the column header. Next, click Edit Value to edit what is shown within this column. This opens the column cell editor. This is where we can insert wildcards, use modifier functions, and apply formatting to each cell. We can even use conditional content within a cell's layout. In our case, all we want to do is insert a link to the edit page. Type the word respond, and then highlight it and click the Workflow Links toolbar icon to make it a link. The Workflow Links toolbar icon can be used to link to internal pages, external pages, and forms. In the Workflow Link wizard, select our Respond to Request page, and then click Next. Now we have the option of using a plain text link or using a button. Let's use a button and make it the color green.
click Finish and then click Save to close the cell editor and save our other settings. The preview is reloaded and we can see our new column and button. As with all links within the workflow designer, we must generate a preview or save our changes and launch the workflow to test the links. Let's save our changes and then launch the live workflow. In the live workflow, let's click the respond button and see what happens. As you can see, the edit page we created is loaded and the form is populated with the selected records data. We can now edit and save the changes. But first, there are a couple things we need to do to improve this page. First, you'll notice the form is centered on the page. This is the default for forms created within Logiforms. We can change this by adjusting the margins on this form in the form designer. The other issue is that we're only seeing the fields that the employee entered when making their request, and we're not seeing the hidden fields that need to be shown to the manager to respond to the request. Let's load this form in the form designer and make some changes. First, let's adjust margins so the form aligns to the left. Open the Theme and Style Editor, click Page, and then open the Outer Container section. Click Show All Properties in the bottom of the window to show the margin settings. Now change the Margin Left property from Auto to Zero to remove the left margin. Now the next issue we need to look at is the fields that are being displayed. Remember our Manager Response fields are hidden, as you can see in the form outline. There are two ways we could show those fields only to managers. Let's look at both options. The first option is to use a dependency. First, let's unhide the fields. Now let's create a dependency on the group and assign a rule that says form display slash access mode equals workflow edit page. This will force the fields to only be visible when loaded via a workflow edit page. The form display slash access mode rule can also be used when creating autoresponders and notifications. That's one way to change the form fields displayed on a form integrated into a workflow. The other way is to use a form view. Form views are different views of your form. Let's undo our dependency changes and create a new form view now. From the form view menu, select create and manage form views, and then click create new view. Name it Manager Response View and click Create New Form View. The new view is created and shown. Double click on it to load it into the form designer. Now let's customize it for our managers. Start by hiding the first set of fields. Next, show the Response Fields group. Let's also add a free text header with some wildcards to show the request details. Finally, let's update the buttons to read Submit Response and hide the Reset button. Our form view is now all set up. Let's return to the workflow designer and tell the edit page to use this form view. Back in the workflow designer, click the edit page settings property button to open the field sets window. Double click the default field set listed. In the edit page wizard under form views, select our newly created form view and then click through to save and finish. The live preview is reloaded and our form view is shown. Now let's save our changes and see how our page looks now. It's working perfectly. The edit page is now using our form view. We can now respond to a request and submit the form. The final step is to create an autoresponder thank you page that will include a link back to the pending request page. We can do this in a couple different ways as well. In the Workflow Designer, if you click on any page, you'll notice the Direct URL property in the General Properties panel. 
you can use this URL to link directly to any of your pages, excluding drill down and edit pages. We could take this URL and use it on our autoresponder thank you page. There is also a shortcut provided that has the additional benefit of returning back to the correct page we were browsing before the edit page. Consider if we had a thousand records and we were viewing records 100 to 200, and we made an edit to a record. We would want to be returned to that same set of records we were browsing previously. This shortcut accomplishes that. Let's quickly create a new autoresponder profile. Open the Thank You page editor and type click here to return to last viewed records. Then highlight it and click the anchor button in the toolbar. This is where we enter our shortcut. Slash slash workflow dot back. This value only works on an autoresponder thank you page and will take us back to the last viewed page. Let's save the changes and test it out. Now after submitting our response to a request and clicking the link we created on the autoresponder thank you page, we're taken directly back to the last viewed page before the edit page. This concludes the video tutorial. Please check out our other workflow videos that show in more detail how to use edit pages, drill down pages, search